Welcome back to Tomorrow Space News. Today, we're diving into an exciting upcoming lunar mission that's launching next week, Intuitive Machines' second lunar lander, IM-2, also named Athena. This mission is part of NASA's ambitious Commercial Lunar Payload Services Program, or the CLIPS program, and is set to launch on February 26, 2025. But before we get into what's on board, let's talk a little bit about what this mission's all about and what happened with their first lander, and how Intuitive Machines is making sure that the lander sticks the landing. Literally. First up, quick refresher on what the CLIPS program is. It's designed to be fast, affordable, and a stepping stone for the Artemis program before we return humans to the lunar surface. Intuitive Machines is one of the key players here, using their Nova C lunar lander to deliver science to the moon. Let's briefly discuss their, well, partially successful mission last year. Back in February of 2024, the IM-1 lander, named Odysseus, made history as the first U.S. spacecraft to soft land on the moon since Apollo 17 in 1972. It touched down near the lunar south pole, but things didn't quite go as planned. So what went wrong with Odysseus? During its descent, a navigation glitch meant that the team had to switch to an experimental NASA LIDAR system at the last minute. From what I understand, as the lander was being prepared for its descent to the surface, mission controllers realized that a safety switch on the primary laser rangefinder system had not been activated during pre-launch preparations. They forgot to turn it on. Whoops. Thankfully, there was an experimental NASA LiDAR system on board, and despite using that backup LiDAR, the landing was quite a bit rougher than what was expected. Odysseus hit the surface at an angle, snagged a landing leg on the uneven terrain, and tipped over to about a 30 degree angle. It still sent back data though, but the mishap did limit its capabilities. After that mistake, I'm sure that Intuitive Machines is going to be double checking and triple checking all of their pre-flight checklists. But hey, lesson learned, right? This time around, Intuitive Machines isn't taking any chances with the Athena lander. They've implemented all of their identified fixes, yep, all of them, and some of the key improvements include upgraded landing legs for better stability, enhanced software for more precise tracking and descent control, and some tweaks to the communication system for better bandwidth. They've also adjusted the design of the lander so that it can handle up to a 10 degree tilt and still operate normally. <laughs> The goal this time is a smooth, upright landing near the lunar south pole on a plateau near Shackleton Crater, about 100 miles from the lunar south pole, a region which should be rich in water ice. NASA and Intuitive Machines are confident that the changes that they made will prevent another tip-over mistake. Alright, now let's get into the fun stuff. What's actually on board the Athena lander? This mission has a bunch of innovative technology. And I'd like to start with a little rocket-powered hopper called Micronova, nicknamed Grace. Oh, it's so cute. This thing is named after the mathematician, computer scientist, and naval admiral Grace Hopper, who invented a few programming languages, including COBOL, which is still used today on some systems. I absolutely love that this little microlander is included on an already small lander. Like, hey NASA, we heard that you liked lunar landers, so we put a little lunar lander on your lunar lander. <laughs> I love it. Anyway, after Athena touches down, Grace will hop off and make five leaps across the lunar surface, including one which is going to dive into a permanently shadowed crater about half a kilometer away. And armed with a neutron spectrometer, some cameras, and a few other instruments, it's hunting for signs of water ice, which is crucial for future lunar bases. This is a tech demo that could change how we explore hard-to-reach lunar areas. And who knows, maybe hoppers like this could be used to explore some lunar caves or even lava tubes. But wait, there's more. Athena Lander is also going to be carrying a trio of lunar rovers. First up is the Mobile Autonomous Prospecting Platform, or MAP, built by Lunar Outpost. This is a 5 to 10 kilogram rover, which is going to roam the surface, map some of the terrain using 3D imagers, and is testing a 4G network. Yeah, a 4G LTE network on the moon. 
brought to you by Nokia, which is absolutely crazy that that company is still around. If anything bad happens on this mission, the Nokia stuff is probably going to survive. <laughs> The map rover also has a tiny passenger on board, Astro Ant. <laughs> this is a microscopic rover about the size of a matchbox. It's built by students at MIT, and it's going to ride on top of MAP's roof to take contactless temperature readings. This thing is so cute. I love this thing so much. Hey NASA, we heard that you liked lunar rovers, so we put a tiny rover on top of your small mini rover. <laughs> I love this. Astro Ant has some magnetic wheels, so it should stay on top of the map rover the entire time. I hope that we get at least one image of these two rovers together. And you know, I think it would be cool to someday have a little fleet of these things crawling around the outside of a lunar base, you know, checking for any sort of instabilities or t just taking pictures. But hold on, there's one more rover on this mission called Yaoki from Japan's Daimon Company, and it's set to explore a... It's, it's basically a mobility demonstration. They're testing an unusual configuration, but also trying to prove that many different designs for rovers could work on the moon, if everything goes well with it. Together, these little rovers are paving the way for future astronaut training, and lunar infrastructure. Now, all of these rovers and landers have to communicate with each other, and here's a little twist that I've learned about. While early plans hinted at a relay satellite called uh, Constellation 1, or CON1, to bounce signals back to Earth, Intuitive Machines is doing direct-to-Earth communications instead, using Nokia's 4G antennas on Athena. They'll beam data directly to Earth. The rovers and the little hopper will also have 4G LTE, and they'll communicate with Athena that'll then beam their data back to Earth. That being said, it does seem that Intuitive Machine still plans to create a lunar communication network, and why they made this change might have to do with costs, technical readiness, or just confidence in their direct-to-Earth communication system that they already have. We'll have to wait and see what their plans are for lunar relay satellites in the future, which will be needed at some point in some form if we continue with the Artemis program and have a permanently crewed lunar base there. Gosh, I haven't even mentioned the primary payload yet. On top of all that other cool stuff, the Athena lander itself is carrying NASA's Prime 1 payload, which is a drill and mass spectrometer combo that's going to dig about a meter or three feet into the lunar soil to analyze it for water ice. Data could unlock how we use lunar resources for fuel, water, and more in the future. Apparently, it can drill several times, not just once, so we may see slightly different results from the samples that it collects. So once again, Athena is planned to launch on a Falcon 9 rocket on February 26th. So how long after that will we have to wait before the potential landing? It seems like it's going to have a direct lunar intercept trajectory similar to their first flight with the Odysseus lander. On that mission, Odysseus took about seven days to reach the moon. It followed a direct intercept trajectory with a commissioning burn on day one, trajectory adjustments over the next couple of days, lunar orbit on day six, and landing on day seven. So if they follow that same sort of plan, this mission for Athena should reach the moon around March 5th or 6th of 2025, as long as there's no delays in the launch or problems along the way. If all goes well, Athena will operate on the lunar surface for 10 days before lunar night shuts it down. What's crazy to me is that if everything goes according to plan, we're going to have two CLPS missions landing on the moon within a few days of each other. Firefly's Blue Ghost Lander is in lunar orbit right now and preparing for its own landing on March 2nd of 2025. Yeah, these robotic missions might not be as grand as Apollo missions, but what a time to be alive. And I'm honestly really excited that the next generation is getting some lunar experience and that we are preparing the way for a permanent lunar base. In any case, this lunar mission is shaping up to be a pretty big step forward for commercial lunar exploration. And after the lessons learned on the Odysseus lander, Intuitive Machines is ready to deliver, hopefully upright this time and fully operational. But what do you think? Do you think that they'll be able to land this time without tipping over? 
Will the Grace Hopper uncover lunar ice? Are the rovers going to perform as expected? What do you think about all this stuff? And let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this update, hit that like button, subscribe, and click the bell so that you can be notified whenever we have more space news for you guys. Thank you very much for watching this video, and until next time, keep moving onwards and upwards, everybody, and don't forget, add Astra to the stars.